Okay. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Scott. Um, I, uh, I want to join in uh, uh, all of us in thanking you, President Perry and Butte College for uh, hosting this event. Uh, we're excited about being here. I have been fortunate to visit Butte College a couple of times in the past year and a half. And uh, I had not been on your campus prior to that. And both of those visits, I was deeply impressed by uh, the work that's being done here. Uh, I came at the uh, dramatic opening uh, and the announcement that Butte College was the first college in the United States to become totally energy independent. And if you go around here, you'll see these solar panels that made that possible. And I also heard the details of that. It wasn't an easy thing. It involved uh, a lot of uh, different moves and a lot of working with the federal government, with state government, with all kinds of uh, our energy companies and so forth. But uh, it's just a remarkable thing. And I think Butte College is uh, certainly one of the star institutions of our 112 colleges uh, in the community college system, the largest system in the United States, I might add. Well, I've uh, been busy at several things, uh, and I will report on those briefly. Uh, we had a press conference, uh, a joint press conference. Uh, Chancellor Charles Reed of the California State University and I had a press conference, and we talked about two things. One is we talked about our transfer program, uh, which we're very proud of, and you'll hear reports on how fast we've moved along on that making the transfer from California Community Colleges to CSU on a system-wide basis, and we believe it will enable us to serve uh, some 50,000 more community college students and 15,000 more CSU students at the same price because we're going to make that transfer much more uh, easy uh, uh, with fewer units having to be accumulated, and uh, so we're proud of that. But we also talked about uh, what we consider to be the real dire circumstances financially. And you will hear from Vice Chancellor Troy a little bit more, as, as well as Vice Chancellor Peary. They're going to talk to you about the impact that these cuts have had on the community college. And of course, uh, if you've been reading the newspaper, you know that there's the real possibility uh, that in mid-year, uh, there will be a trigger uh, which will cut colleges and other uh, state allocations even further. Uh, so we held this press conference, and I have here just a few of the many uh, quotes we got in newspapers. I got probably three or four or maybe five uh, calls from radio stations, uh, talked to them. Uh, we had the, the LA Times, the Fresno Bee, uh, whole of the Associated Press. There's a whole stuff press about that. And, and uh, so uh, uh, I was glad to work with uh, our uh, vice chancellor uh, that uh, has come on board to, to be with us, Paul Feast, and uh, others uh, in the communications department on that. And then on August 24th through 26th, I attended a nationwide conference sponsored by the Lumina Foundation. Uh, the Lumina Foundation is very interested in student success. In fact, they have given $200,000 to our particular student success task force uh, in order to enable them to do that work. And uh, they paid my way there. There were three of us who were invited from California. And uh, I, I got a lot of good information uh, about all kinds of student success efforts that are being undertaken in other parts uh, of the nation, some outstanding speakers. And uh, uh, it was uh, the first time I'd ever been in Indianapolis, and I found that to be uh, a very informative uh, conference. Uh, then uh, Lieutenant Governor Newsom has kicked off uh, a plan called an Economic Growth and Competitiveness Agenda for California. And I received this document a few weeks ago, and I read through it, and I was greatly impressed by the research uh, that has been done. And he wants uh, the three heads of the public higher education institutions, uh, Mark Udall, president of the University of California, Charles Reed, chancellor of the California State University, and myself to be part of a commission or a task force that's going to be working on this uh, whole idea of creating more jobs in California. 
Uh, so I will be attending uh, a meeting uh, of that on September 15th. That'll be, of course, this week on Thursday in San Francisco. Uh, Governor Brown has announced that he wants to form a Veterans Council, and we're going to be working on that uh, in uh, uh, shortly. Uh, and of course, since the veterans, uh, serving veterans has been one of our main emphases. Uh, the board has stated that as one of its goals, and uh, we have uh, had a lot of uh, good leadership from uh, two of our board members, one a former board member, Bobby McDonald and Manuel Baca. And we're going to have a summit, a veteran summit, uh, that will be uh, underwritten uh, by J.P. Morgan Chase in December. Uh, and I'm excited about that. So most of the veterans who are returning from Iraq and Afghanistan uh, are coming to California Community Colleges uh, to take advantage of the GI Bill. For instance, this college has a Veterans Resource Center, and uh, there are other colleges, and we want to encourage uh, that kind of attention uh, to veterans. Uh, I sent out a, uh, a notice to the Board of Trustees about the fact that uh, Controller John Chang had uh, asked for information concerning salaries in the community college, and I've cooperated with him and asked the various colleges to provide that information. Uh, there's been uh, a great deal of criticism of the executive salaries in California State University and University of California. And uh, I, I certainly didn't uh, want uh, there to be uh, that kind of criticism leveled at us, and I think the best approach to that is transparency. Uh, so that kind of uh, brings you up to date uh, on what we're doing. Uh, uh, we had an extensive report yesterday. We'll have a little opportunity today to also talk about the Student Success Task Force. Uh, but we had uh, a, a wonderful uh, presentation yesterday by the chair of that task force, Peter McDougall, and uh, the full-time staff person, uh, Amy Supinger. And uh, the board in its retreat was able to talk at great length about the work of the Student Success Task Force. They were uh, brought up to date, uh, we had a, a very uh, healthy, robust discussion. I think it lasted about four hours, didn't mm -hmm. it? And so, uh, uh, in as you know, the bill, uh, Senate Bill 1143, that formed this task force, said that it would report then uh, for approval to the Board of Governors in January. Uh, so the uh, Board of Governors uh, wants to be fully informed about what we're doing. Uh, there are, of course, two members of this Board of Governors that are on that task force, the Chair, Peter McDougall, and uh, Manuel Baca are both on this uh, Student Success Task Force. So uh, that's kind of my update, uh, and uh, I don't know whether there is any questions or anything else that somebody would want to add. Questions or comments for the Chancellor? 